Yes, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. You made my life so beautiful. Can you sing me that song? So beautiful, and as you are, you have made me here now. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forever more. You make my life, you make my life so beautiful. And as you are, and as you are, you have met me here and there. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. I want more of you. in our lives in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. If you know you are going to have a special encounter with the Lord today, shout a big hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Some people are just looking at me. That's why some people will come to a meeting, they will contact Jesus and the people will go out and they will say, how did you do it? Because you are just there. You don't even connect. You don't have faith. Hello, and that Nina, is the calling of heaven. Nina. If you know you are going to connect to this, shout a big hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, Joko. Um, please, the person with time, when it's about 15 minutes, caution me. Because when I get to the seventh heaven, I don't know what is happening here again. <laughs> well, thank God for... His grace, testimony, the testimonies we had today, and um, you know the Ario. I mean, that's his first name. His testimony. You know when I was looking at him, his wife. His wife I said, "This is a good place to tell, especially young girls, when you are looking for husband, don't look with your eyes. Look at with the eyes of the Lord. Because, because when Ronke, when God showed her Ario, she said, no, I'm looking for a tall guy. Somebody who knows how to do shaku shaku. And it's only say shaku shaku. Slim guy. And it's here your smooth guy. God said, look through my eyes. This is your husband. And she started fighting the thing. God, this is not the kind of picture I have in my heart. God said, this is the picture I have okay. in my heart. God, I gave up. I said, now you will see what I mean. And can you see what God meant? Somebody shout hallelujah. And I thank God for the testimony. That Miller, like you just cut short so many of these testimonies. You know that accident that you just spoke about? If not for God, we'll be saying another thing now. Because of the health system of Nigeria. You know the place where he sat? That vehicle ran into a stationary trailer. A wife 
of that place where he was. I will say, Lady dear. Well, may God bless her so. The, the other members were sitting at the back. And the, um, what is the name of her name? Odun, Odun had a very deep cut here. And they, they now have to call Pastor Day, Pastor Sukomi. That, that night they were rushing there. God ambulance this last night. Uh, they took them to the Gada General Hospital. They said they don't have bed. They did not even apply for state. And this person was bleeding. And they did not care. So they called me. They said, and if you go to get, they, they called me that they are having problems, so they are not getting it today. Emergency. So I called somebody who is the permanent secretary of Ministry of Health. So I said, don't worry, I will call them. I think he called them. And they said they are, they are hard. And they told me they would do it. And this girl was building. I was angry. I was angry. I said, I'm going to, I told I said, I'm going to send a test to the governor. He said, hey, if I do it, it's going to affect my friend because query will come. Then, I think he started talking with some of the people. God touched their mind. And they were just, they now teach. They now attend. They, Somebody had emergency. One, they are not asking for bed. He said, can, can you, can you? You don't have to. So they stitch it and they stitch this in, in a bad way. One was wrong. She was now taken to general um, lawsuit. So when the people in lawsuit saw this, I said, is it doctor that did this or mechanic? Those guys are wicked. And they said, even while they were there, they brought another case. The person was bleeding. They did not even look at it. They said, take it out. They did not even attempt first aid to stop the blood. Now, the girl that sat beside Damilola in the car, you know, that driver just pulled her down. Pulled her on the floor. So they were running and taking care of um, or do. Well, I was sad, I what happened to that girl? And the guy took the car and ran away. So the family will not even know, and that's why that person will die. We just pray, God will visit us in this country and help us. If not for God, we will say another thing. Her parents did not know that she was there. When, you know, they had to phone her dad. And if you are the parent of such person, you send so somebody to university, and then somebody is going to for one fellowship meeting. How will you feel? It took God to handle that situation. But God will reward you. God knows that you want to advance His work. You know that, Milala, because of the great future you have, Satan want to terminate. Destiny. Satan is if I feel and that's what God was telling you. God showed you that. It's not that God could not have prevented it. To show that this is what Satan has for you. And when Satan is so aggressively after your life, there's something very big ahead. But because you serve God, you put your trust in God, all things will work out for good and will take you out of those dangerous situations. And because you have survived this one, you become unstoppable. The power of the enemy able to stop you. And as many of you have, 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 have escaped this year already, every plan of Satan to pull you down. Satan will have no power over your life again. So thank God as a church for what God has done. Now, please, can you turn the Bible with me to Matthew chapter 23? I will read from verse 1 to verse 7. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. 
For they bind heavy bodies, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places in feasts, at feasts and best seats in the synagogues. Greetings in the marketplaces to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. This is a message I've titled Christian Character. You know, this are the days when you don't feel free at times to tell people that you are Christian. These are the days when you get a little bit a little bit scared to introduce yourself as a pastor. Because these are the days when we have men of God without character. People calling themselves Christian without the character of Jesus. And these has become a major, a major obstacle for the move of the gospel, for the preaching of the gospel. Because when you don't have character, even if you have skill, you have intelligence, people will not take you serious. So when you see people that are not God, they're not having character, people are not Christians if they don't, that don't have character. You don't be surprised you say, well, it's normal. But when you see somebody who's a follower of Christ and not a man of good character, you say there's a problem here. Because these are the people that we thought they would give hope to our generation. And now you see them, there is no character. Why I'm saying this is because we have a lot of youth in the house. And some of you are just coming to the world. Where you will come under pressure. And your character will be tested. Pressure of the world will bring out the real you. Without pressure, maybe you are still pretending so that brethren will know that we are like the same thing. The same type of person. But when pressure comes, those things we are hiding inside of you are, we come out and the true character will be. Character is defined as a collection of our behavior that shows who we are. This is how D.L. Moody put it. Character is what you are in the dark. Who we are when eyes are not on us. It is not what we display when we are aware that there are eyes on us. And this is shown in our integrity, attitude, and disposition. A true Christian. It's supposed to be a person with integrity. Someone that will say a word and he will find it that way. 
A person with the right attitude towards God and men. A person with right disposition, temperament, nature, or character. Character is who is who we are. And it can be learned and built when we are in Christ. In this study test, we'll see our Lord Jesus giving example of people, prominent people, men of God with that good character. People that lack integrity. People with wrong attitude towards kingdom business. He described it as Pharisees. He ah. was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. Okay, I want Pharisees. I want no, no, no. And it's described them as hypocrites. They were the priests of those days, the evangelists, the bishop, the spiritual leaders of those days. And he said, Look at them, they are, but they are hypocrites. Because they will be telling you, Don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery. At the back, when you are not there, they will be committing their adultery. And they call them hypocrites. That word hypocrite is taken from a Greek word called hypocrites. This describes one that is play acting. I want to be anything that put on an act. So in those days when they have theater, they will, they, will, they will tell somebody, you are going to play the role of a cat. So they put a mask of cats. So you'll be acting that role of cat. But that one, you are acting as cat. But you're not cat. The real you is when you put off that. So, that is where that word hypocrisy came from. So, the hypocrite consists his true motives under a cloak of make-believe. Therefore, when Jesus was talking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 23, verse 3, he said, Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and they do not do. Now, earlier before he said, These people, they, they, they are the people that I sit in Moses' seat. They are the high priests of those days. Yeah, they, they are representing God. You know, those days they will be reading from the Bible that this is what God says. That, he said that thing they are saying to do, that is correct. Do it. But when, when you look at their own life, change whatever why don't do as they are doing. Because they will say. It, but they will not do it. So hypocrites are people without character. People that lack integrity. Hypocrisy is not Christ's character. True and genuine Christians are not so hypocrites. True and genuine Christians are people that Reflect the character of Jesus. When you look at the life of Jesus, you see him displaying impeccable character and integrity. Because 
he didn't play act. He did not ask his disciple to do what he's not doing. As a matter of fact, people find it difficult to distinguish between him and his disciples. He told them, he said, you will suffer. Okay, oh dear. People will beat you. And they will even kill you. And he said it to them. And he went in to do that thing. He went to suffer. They beat him. They spit on him. They kill him. So he did not tell them to do what he could not do. And that is who Jesus is. Yes. And if you say you are a follower of Jesus, that's the kind of character you have. Because it is imperative when we say we are followers of Christ, our character and behavior must reflect Him and is called to us on us to the best of our abilities. Which includes our temperament. And if we are in leadership, this is more imperative. This is because people are watching us. Do you know that unbelievers know more about us than fellow Christians? You know, fellow Christians, when you see your fellow Christian, you will pretend and you will be having the wrong impression about you. When you now get to in the marketplace, no Christian around. You let that, that, that the true character will come. So when a fellow Christian says that this is my brother, this is my brother. Is the unbeliever that you are in the same but we went to the bar together, you went to the May God help us in Jesus' name. So we demonstrate character and integrity when we do what we say and we act. What we believe. If not, we are hypocrites. And the consequences is what Jesus was pronouncing there. Wo, wo, wo. From verse 23 of that chapter 23, Matthew. He said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have declared the weightier matters of the Lord, justice, mercy, and faith. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Verse 25 said, Woe unto you. For you cleanse the outside of the cup. But inside they are full of exhaustion and self-indulgence. Verse 27. Woe to you, Pharisees. For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of deadness and all of uncleanness. Verse 29. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, if we have lived in the days of our father, we will not have been partakers with them with blo- uh, in the blood of the prophets. Now, the easiest way to attract the woe of God is to be a hypocrite. You don't need anybody to help you to get this woe. Just be living a double life as a Christian. Pretend you're a brethren. Be sleeping with church members and then you go. Pretend you're a brethren. Be stealing people's Amen. money, church money. Nobody will curse you. That war will just be looking for you like this. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 
Real and authentic Christian character is not just a personality or our disposition. It is a description of who we are as a Christian. What we are called to in our entirety. It encaps- encapsulates the fruit of the Spirit from God's love and work in us. It is, it is built upon the fruit of the spirit, which all the other character traits are codependent. So our character summarizes the essence of our work with Christ. Ah, Iwawa, Insheni, Okoye, on be as a genuine Christian. It is how we must be if Christ has a hold on us. I want to repeat that. It is how we must be if Christ had hold on us. Christian character is what you possess when Christ has hold on you. When you see somebody with Christian character, you will know that he has allowed himself to be captured by Jesus. That self is dead. So Christ is alive. And when you start looking at him, is it Pastor Leko or Christ I'm seeing? I'm seeing a body that looks like Pastor Lekon, but this Christ I'm seeing. Because he has allowed Christ to lay hold of him. So when people abuse him, you just react the way Christ will react. When people enjoy him, no, it's in the flesh. This that flesh you want to react. And they say, this, it's another person that is here. React like Christ. When pressure come upon him to come and do what he ought not to do. You tell them, even if you are going to kill me, I won't do that thing. Because there is somebody that is in him that is greater than the world. Even in the Old Testament, somebody put a display of, uh, the, um, came up as somebody, a person of integrity. That was Samuel. Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, Samuel 3 and 4. Samuel made a statement. Samuel is sort of come back to show people that he's a man of integrity. Samuel 1 Samuel 12 from 3. He said, yeah. Witness before me the Lord, the Lord and before he's anointed. Whose horse have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? And from whom have I received any bribe? I know what animal body back. to blind my eyes. That if you fall out, I will you? restore it to you. What is that? And they said, You have not cheated us. What we pay? Oh, you know what? Yes, oh, dear. Have you taken anything from any man's hand? Oh, see, don't come low any guy. If you are not a man of integrity, you but Jenny Benny come openly. Oh, the was it back? I challenge people. Oh, see, people going and tell them. Oh, see, something that if I have done. Wrong thing in your life. Say it openly here. In the Old Testament, when Jesus Christ had not come, all the uh, minister of teachers were not had. We have somebody with integrity. Now Jesus Christ came, we have grace, we have better understanding of the laws of God. And we have few people with integrity. And when we get to heaven, we are going to 
Use the same standard to judge us. As if you should want to say that you are. Now, they will, even their own standard will be lower because they did not have the new oh, she want to want your law. That's my question. Now, you know the kind of measure they will give us. But our prof, are you agreeing with me? You are the, you know, there's the brother prof here. That's brother prof. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, that is the prophecy. As you come into the marketplace, the the one of the major counseling uh, 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 counsel I'm giving you that you should not join those people who are portraying Christ in bad light. Come and be one of those people. That we come and enforce the will of God on earth as it in heaven. But we don't and integrity. You will not be taking serious. When you, get, when you get to the place of work, the place of work you will understand what I'm telling you. Your character will be tested. A lot of children of Satan. Rich children of Satan. They want to destroy your testimony. For you now to say, hey, if you can't beat them, join them. But God will see you through. God will see you through. It doesn't matter whether you're a senior pastor. You are a bishop. Your character will be tested. Even when Paul became a pastor with great anointing, after after he, did, he discovered that he loved doing the right thing. His spirit loved doing the right thing. If he found out that that right thing he wanted to do, he found out himself not doing it. Maybe you come and preach as I'm preaching now. And and say, everybody, make your use. Pray 10 o'clock every night before you sleep. But the get on one is I'm total. He is not, he did not do it. But oh why he come and find another day. I said, God forgive me. Oh God, you are that Jimmy. But I have to tell them to do it again. He will tell them to do it and he will not do it. But as of my gun say, I won't go on this. Now look at himself. Oh, why you are that? It's like I'm a man with that character. Oh, I very much journey to join in here. I'm telling them. I'm telling them to do what I don't do. I'm also come and say, He said, but Satan is a liar. You are a liar. But it's a tiny oh I'm going to expose you. He came to his church. He said, I am in trouble. The thing I want to do, I can't do it. I tell you, go and pray. Me, I don't pray. I don't even know what is wrong with me. But I know so this flesh is still battling with me. Me, that I want to do good things, I'm doing bad things. Who can deliver me from can this body of sin? You know, the day you expose Satan, that is the beginning of the end of his hold upon your life. And that now put a pressure on him to start calling on God, how do I solve this problem? And God is saying, Holy Spirit, help him. And in Romans chapter, uh, chapter uh, no, 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 in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, he now said, but I discipline myself. And I, and I bring it under subjection. Let's when I have preached to others, I may I myself may become disqualified. He said, even if I can speak in tongues, professor, raise the dead. But if I'm a hypocrite, I will be able to save others. But I will become disqualified. You said, but I don't want to become disqualified. That's why I have to discipline myself. So every temptation to make me to be like hypocrites, I put it under. So that when I preach to others, I call them to Christ. I myself will be saved. How many minutes more? Five minutes. Now, so I'm going to just quickly. I can't explain now. You can put them down because I just quickly have to talk about 
how to uh, uh, build this Christian character. Number one, fall in love with Christ. You become passionate with Christ that all other things do not matter anymore. Because that was one of the things I saw Paul did. You know, when you fall in love with somebody, you just want to do many things to please that person. Now, you have hundred naira, you want to use to buy a recharge card. And that babe you are looking at say you want to be your future partner, just call it say I don't have money for the charge card. And this is the last one you have. You know, you know joyfully, you just say, Don't worry, don't worry, I will send you that recharge card. Go see what go see what like. you you will be that the Lord is my shepherd. Because because you love her. You'll be able to sacrifice that recharge oh, card. Don't worry, I will go and look for my own recharge card. When you fall in love with Christ, you just want to do whatever he likes. And that's what Paul did. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. He said, but what things were gained to me? This I counted for loss. For Christ. Number two. Always seek his presence. Desire Desire to have time to seek his presence. People that lack character run away from God's presence. You know, Adam, when God created him, he would always be expecting God every time to come and just fellowship together. The day he sinned, God did not drive him. He was the one who ran away from God. He became, became a man with that character. If a man with that character, afraid, when they said, the glory of God is here. God will not drive you. you. You will be the one that will run away from God. And David knew the implication of this. David and that's why in Psalm 51 verse 11 said, "The way only David, the only God, lend me a daughter as a cockola." Said, um, "Don't take him, um, your presence. Cast no meat, cast not, not away God. from your presence, O oh Lord." He said, "God, you can do anything, though. you can oh, do anything, God, though. God. but cast me not away from your presence." Number three, grow. In your discipleship. That is daily learning from the law. When you, when you are a disciple of Jesus, you'll be going to your disciple and be learning about him every day. Oh my Lord, what you look at? Oh my keko ni pare lo jojuma. So that you'll be able to react to issues the way Jesus. Yeah, okay, in Matthew eleven twenty nine, Jesus said, "Learn from me." He said, "Learn from me." And that's what will make you a person of good character. Number four, be persistent in your prayers. You read the Bible and you don't pray. You are like a um, grenade that she has that pin that cannot explode. Prayer helps us to confront battles that are, attack our integrity. Uh, attack our integrity. Because 
the enemy will attack your integrity. No, sorry, pay. Oh, a otta. Yo, Joju ko iwa. Omole in Christian ire. Jesus had to pray for Peter so that when Satan attack his integrity, grace will be sufficient for him. Jesus be adu avu pay cheru. So to to be ge. This Satan iba be Joju jako ori ofe yo wa fun. You may be a man of integrity. Ole journey be ni re iwa re do ke kupe. If he wants to get you, he said the only way. Let me attack him on the area of integrity. Pay Satan to buy bread. Don't you call me? Ah, ni be a roar the eagle. I'll pay all your money. Christy, you need to buy. But so many unsafe battles are settled in the place of prayer. She go a call up for. He o go ati wala ni aman. Don't you call me be a drawa. If Jesus had not prayed for Peter, take Jesus over. But do I have to pay him? You have been regarded as one of those hypocrites. Pay about the Jacob on a Jacob. La la la, we are not going to be. We are not going to be. Verse five. I won't count on perseverance. Pe koni emi idrotiri. Roman chapter five. A forty. It will roll more than you. I'm going to stop here because I can't complete this. Roman chapter five. If you can't do it, Roman chapter five. It will roll more than you. Verses three and four. As a keta ati ekeni, and not only that. But we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. You see, I said tribulation will produce perseverance. I want to go. I want to go. You know, I like to be at the point where we are. I see a suru. Perseverance will produce character. At his suru, when she say iriri, I will explain this and we close. What shall I hear? I'll see. If you are in a party, we are walking in a place. T oba when she say bikan, and when you get there, you said I'm a child of God. So oba shakwe omole stay Christian ni mi, and then you now discover that in that company, oba dipeni bi say yo. People are cutting corners to cheat the company. They are taking bribe. And you say, as a Christian, I can't do this. You will come under intense tribulation. You'll be victimized by your bosses. The, the, even your mates, they will be ganging up against you. They will promote you from where things can be easy for you to where things will be difficult for you. And they say that is what they call tribulation. But when you persevere, it, then you will know that ah, through that tribulation, you will not be your capacity to persevere will not start increasing. And then. When this thing happens, you say no, and the people will know that that person he will not take it. But one And that becomes your character. If you don't say we want to now steal, we want to plan how to steal in this company. They said that brother James. But I James, so brother Luke who want to. I go look, and then there's that brother Andrew. But Andrew, and somebody said, "Don't, don't oh, talk about yeah, that yeah. one." And then we know him. Oh, no, man. The more Jesus, the more they feel it. They call that is the character. That was this, that that was developed through tribulation and persecution. They won't come to you when they want to do bad things because they know you. I want you to start talking to God now. God, I don't want to be hypocrite. I don't want to have double nature. I want to be Christian with Christ. Christ character. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. I don't want to say and not be doing what I'm saying. I want to represent you. I don't want the whoa, 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 whoa. I want blessing from you. Lord help me. Lord help me. As we are praying, if you want to. You know you want to give your life to Christ. 
Or you just want to, God, I have some weaknesses in my life. Satan is attacking my integrity. Just place your hand for your chest. I'm going to pray for you now. Holy Spirit will locate you. My Father, my God, as many people as are here, that Satan is attacking their integrity. Lord Jesus, but because they believe your word, deliver them from the hand of Satan, Lord. In the name of Jesus, like you pray for Peter and protected his integrity with grace. Lord, let your prayer locate this one. Lord, the Deliver them from the attack upon their integrity. Give them to grace to persevere when tribulation comes. So that they be able to have Christ like character. And all glory will be returned unto you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. In your cocky hallelujah.